Kirosemi at Tobu Zoo is an Intamin Megalite, but not just any Intamin Megalite. This was actually the first one to debut around the world. It opened the same year as Piraten at Jura Summerland, but because it opened a few months before, this is the original Megalite. And these rides are famous for being small in height and speed, but still packing a punch, having a strong layout. This is the first time that I had gotten the opportunity to ride one of these things. And so while this review is going to be focused specifically on Kiosemi, I imagine that this review will also be able to apply to the other Intamin Megalites around the world. Now, the first thing I wanted to touch on really is that layout because that's essentially what this ride is all about. This was doing those quick, rapid transitions and sharp airtime hills before it was cool. And as a result, there's a lot of other rides out there that do what Kiosemi does better. Look at something like the RMC Raptor, the Chance Hyper GTX. These are all rides that I would consider a lot better than an Intamin Megalite, but they're also a lot newer. So I can totally respect what Intamin did because for the time that it came out, it was pretty dang solid. That all being said, I think I had my expectations a little high for this ride. And maybe it was because I had heard how great these things were, everyone raving about them. At one point, I know Kiyosemi was voted one of the greatest roller coasters in the world. So I was pretty excited and I think as a result, I was left disappointed. That doesn't mean that these things are bad, but also because I've done Lightning Run at Kentucky Kingdom, or Railblazer at California's Great America, or basically any RMC, I've seen what some of these rides can do, and the fact is that the Intimate Megalites just don't do it as well. But I think for Japan specifically, this is a good ride for them. It's one of the crazier coasters in the country, definitely not reaching the ranks of something like Hakuge, Ejinaika, or Flying Dinosaur, but a ride like this is probably more extreme than the Japanese people are used to, and it does it with a moderate high height and a pretty standard speed. Top height, 102 feet, 98 foot drop, 53 miles per hour, less than 3,000 feet of track. None of the stats are mind blowing and that's kind of the point of this ride. One of the things that Megalites are known for is their airtime. And I'd say there's three great twisted airtime moments in the middle of the ride here. Not so much the first drop. I actually thought the first drop was kind of okay. And when you look at this footage, you'll see that the first drop is not very steep at all. I was actually kind of surprised at what they did here. I think it's pretty good for what it is but it's definitely not anything to shout at. It's not very steep at all. One thing that this coaster does have working to its advantage is it has a pretty short train, so that means it can navigate those transitions a bit quicker. And you'll see, especially once you get towards the end of the ride, the elements are a lot smaller than they are at the beginning. I will say, however, the pacing wasn't as good as I was hoping. Part of that might have been because it was running a bit slow on the day we went to ride this thing. I'm like 90% sure we were the first ride of the day, so it didn't have any time to warm up. But I did get multiple rides on it, and I would say the more we rode it, you could feel the ride was getting back into its groove, running a bit quicker than it was even the ride directly before it. But it still wasn't going through the course as quick as maybe I would have liked. And I think you can see that in this footage. Some of those elements towards the end were definitely slow. You look at that last turn into the brakes, yikes, that thing crawls through it. But unfortunately, because this is the only Intamin Megalite I've ridden, I don't know if I can say that all of them are like that. This is the only experience that I've had with one of these things. And the fact is, when I got off Kiyosemi for the first time, I was left pretty disappointed. It just didn't hit the mark that I was expecting it would. I think it started to grow on me a little bit the more I rode it. And I'd probably say this is one of the 10 best coasters in Japan, but definitely not top 5. The ride definitely has some redeeming qualities though. Like, immediately when you leave the station, you have that cable lift hill. This thing's only 100 feet tall, it doesn't need that, but already you're off to a pretty strong start because you shoot up to the top of this thing. You go down that first drop that I talked a little bit about, you don't really get a whole lot of airtime there, but that first turn that's low to the ground and over the water, that pulls some pretty good Gs. I grayed out. And that was one thing about this ride that I was not expecting to happen. So that was a nice surprise. That next element is this twisted airtime hill. Definitely one of those elements that's gonna be better in the back. I would say this is a backseat ride, but what I like about this twisted airtime hill is look how tall it is. It's amazing how high this thing gets up there once you consider the initial height that you start off with. It's a fairly tall element. Naturally, it does mean that you lose quite a bit of speed once you hit the apex of that hill, but you regain some of that as you go throughout the ride course. After that, you have just a traditional airtime hill. That's by far one of the best airtime moments on the ride. And the next sequence of events that follows is a low to the ground turn, another twisted hill, another turn, some small airtime hills, and then that curve into the brakes. Visually, it looks like a mini sky. 
Skyrush when you first look at it. I wish that it brought the same intensity and craziness that Skyrush had, but you have to think, again, this came first, so maybe this is one of those stepping stone coasters that led to crazy rides like Skyrush. But I think to just sum up this ride, for its final score, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Like I said, I was definitely underwhelmed after riding. I enjoyed it, but not as much as I thought I would. I think I just don't quite get the hype that was behind the Megalites, and maybe all that hype existed back when these things were brand new. But as I mentioned, now that there's just a lot newer and better rides out there, this thing just didn't quite do it for me. I wouldn't rank it particularly high or anything. If you find yourself in Tokyo, I mean, hey, yeah, go check it out. I'd be curious to hear what you guys have to say about it. If you've ridden an Intamin Megalite, if you agree with my thoughts, or if you think I just caught it on a bad day and I'm completely wrong and these things are amazing. Either way, post all that down below. Let me know. And of course, if you're new to the channel, you can check out other coast reviews I've done. They're all available in a playlist organized by alphabetical order and the coaster's name. So go give that a watch. I have reviewed coasters from all around the world. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.